This is David Healy here with LibraWave. I'd like to introduce you to a new Rhapsody instrument. This is Osiris, and it's an Egyptian lyre. So first I'll walk you through the interface and then we'll go through the articulations and the presets. So in the top left we have the velocity editor. This allows you to adjust the velocity response of the instrument. So in Osiris velocity controls the dynamics of the instrument. So if you want to play everything at the lowest velocity you could do something like this. And then no matter how hard you hit the keys it's always going to be the lowest velocity. Or if you want everything to be at the highest velocity you could do this. You can add nodes to the table by clicking, and you can drag these around. And you can remove nodes by right clicking on them. If you want to adjust the curve between two nodes, you can right click and drag the mouse up or down. Okay, below that we have the AHDSR gain envelope. And this allows you to adjust the attack, the attack curve, the hold time, the decay, the sustain, and the release portion of the articulation. And this is per articulation. So if we uh, pull down the sustain, for example, for this articulation, and switch to another one, you can see it goes to the settings for that particular articulation. We'll double click these to reset their value. If you want to enter a specific value, you can hold shift on your keyboard and click on the knob and type in a specific value. And again, double click just to reset those. In the center of the interface, we have the articulations list. And as you saw, we can click on these to change articulation. We can also change articulation using a key switch. And the key switch note name is here on the right hand side. So if I press D0 on my keyboard, which is in the red keys down here, it will switch to the tremolo articulation. And if I press C0, it will go back to the plucked. Over at the right, we have the expression controller. This is a sub volume control. So we've got the master volume down here. And then the expression is a sub volume. And this by default is set to CC11. You can right click on this and remove that if you like, or you can assign it to a different controller either by choosing one from the menu or clicking on MIDI learn and then moving a controller of your choice. So now I've mapped it to CC1, which is my mod wheel. And now I'm going to remove that. Below the expression, we have the Macams section. So Macams are a type of Arabic scale or mode, and there's a whole load of them. What we've got here is a few of the most common ones and you can just turn this dial to select the one you want or go to the first position to turn the feature off. So choosing one of these Macams will affect the keyboard. You can see the on-screen keyboard has changed. So before I demonstrate these, let's talk about the keyboard. So the lower keys, the red ones, those are the articulation key switches. These two blue keys, the first one will re-trigger the last played note. So if I play a note and then press C1, it will re-trigger it. So this is great for doing fast repetitions and tremolo. The second of these two blue key switches, D1, will cause the next note to be detuned by a quarter tone. So if I play G, and then I play D1, and then I play G again, you can hear it was detuned, and then I'll play it one more time, and it's back to where it was. So it detunes by a quarter tone, which is quite a common detuning in Arabic music. Okay, the green keys, these are some percussive samples of the body of the instrument being struck in various ways. So we get a, a bit of a percussion instrument going on. The white keys show the standard playable range of the instrument. These lighter blue keys at the top allow us to select the different macams.
You can also do that using a MIDI controller assigned uh, in the same way as we did for expression, either using the Learn MIDI CC or the drop down menu. So if we select the first one, we can see that it changes colors of the playable keys on the keyboard. So any keys that aren't colored are no longer playable, they'll be silent. With this particular macam, it's going to be all of the black keys that are silent. So I'm playing the black keys and nothing is happening. There's no sound coming out. So the sandy colored keys, they will produce sound. So the first thing the macam does is it restricts which keys you can play. So you're now only going to be able to play in that mode or scale. You'll also notice that we have these slightly darker colored keys. So this is the second thing the Macam mode does is it sets certain keys to automatically be detuned by a quarter tone. So in this case, it's B and E and the same in the upper octave. So those notes will be detuned by a quarter tone. And again, that's part of this particular mode. So you can go through and explore these and um, you can change between them in real time using those key switches we looked at starting at C5. Okay, now let's go through each of the articulations. So we've got the standard plucked articulation, that's what we've heard so far. Now we'll go for the picked, which has a bit of a brighter sound. The tremolo, which is a picked tremolo. We also recorded some eboard drones, which is not a traditional playing technique of this instrument, but it creates a really good drone sound. And then we have a selection of articulations that are combinations of the previous four articulations. So we've got the plucked plus ebo. Picked plus Ebo. Tremolo plus Ebo. Plucked plus Tremolo. And Picked plus Tremolo. So with both of these two, it's like a tremolo with a bit of an accent at the beginning. With these three, it's like the previous articulation with a resonance running underneath. For each of the articulations, we have a little volume slider. So you can adjust the relative balance between the different articulations. So this is useful if you need to adjust those volumes for individual articulations to fit your particular performance. In general, I've tried to balance the articulations out of the box, but obviously if you're playing at different velocities, have different expression settings and playing different tunes, you can adjust that to better suit your piece of music. So that covers the basics of Osiris. If we go up here to where it says all articulations, we can click on that to access the preset browser. And what I've done is I've actually broken up the instrument into individual articulations so that if you only want to have one of these articulations active, you don't have to load them all in. Now, Osiris doesn't use a lot of memory. You can see I'm only using 11 megabytes here, but you never know in a large session of every megabyte counts. So maybe you only want the Ebo samples. So you can just click on Ebo and now it's only 0.2 megabytes. So that might make a difference. And sometimes it's all you need.
So as I say, these are just the same articulations, but just individual. And you'll notice for this one, the percussive, uh, the Macam control is actually disabled and we don't have the key switches. Osiris is one of the first Rhapsody instruments to feature MPE. So if you have an MPE controller, such as a Roly C board, you can make use of this. So you go to the settings page by clicking the cog icon, go down to MPE and click enable MPE mode, then click add MPE modulation, and you can choose one of the various modulators that are available. Currently it's just volume and pitch. There doesn't seem to be any others that are really suitable for this instrument, but you have a lot of choice here. So you can click on one of these and you can set up the gesture you want to use for this particular modulator. You can adjust the curve and you can adjust its intensity and smoothing. To delete this, you can just click on it and press delete on your keyboard and it goes away. I'll be adding MPE support to all Rhapsody instruments in the future where it's appropriate. I have a little confession to make. Everything you've heard so far has actually been Osiris with a reverb added to it. So out of the box, Osiris is actually a very dry library, and this was intentional so that you can put your own reverb on it. But let's hear it in its natural form out of the box. So you can hear a much drier sound. So with it having a nice dry sound, you can fit this into your mixes and put on whatever reverb you want and get it to really fit into the virtual space. It's one thing I like about dry libraries is I find they're a lot more versatile. You don't have that reverb already built in. Okay, so that's Osiris, the Egyptian Lyre. I hope this brief overview gives you a nice idea of the library. And if you'd like to hear some detailed audio demos, you can find those at the website. There's a link in the video description below this video on YouTube. Thank you very much for joining me and I'll see you next time.